Greetings, my perverted brothers and brothers, because I don't think there are any sisters out there perverted enough to watch this stuff. It is me, the Artie Dance, your purveyor of all things smutty and pervy, and I'm back with exactly what you're craving for, more ridiculous smutty movies full of nudity. And we're going back to 1981 for this one. Welcome to the Smut Files. This is female gym coach, jump and straddle. An office lady, or OL as they're lovingly referred to, is practicing for the National Sports Festival in Japan. Everyone is super supportive of her too. Her name, by the way, is Kei-chan, that might be important to know. While warming up for practice, the rest of her teammates inform her of the bad news. The coach is disbanding their team thanks to orders from high up, who wants Kei-chan and her group to be a rhythmic gymnastics team. Yeah, I don't know what that is either, so I had to keep watching to find out more. Her director tells her that it's to get sponsors on board, and he does this while casually sexually harassing her by touching her boobs repeatedly. Kei-chan meets the team's new coach, the same guy she masturbated to the night before and is relegated back to a team member to compete, complete with her having to wear a cute, brightly colored uniform. Not only is he a new coach, he's also her old coach, and they have a history of doing the naked splits on the pummel horse. Channeling her best lethal weapon impersonation, Kei-chan thinks she's too old for this shit and decides she doesn't want to be a part of the team anymore. During their first training session, the girls start dirty talk about which one of them will sleep with the coach first. See fellas, girls are just as horny as men. They love sex as much, if not more, than you do. Kei-chan watches from the distance, jealous that she's not part of the horny conga line waiting to screw her ex, and realizes the girls are complete fuck-ups and she needs to step in and save the day. Within two seconds of picking up the ribbon, everyone is in awe of her. But before she can rejoin the team and save the day, she has hate sex with her coach, but he refuses to go all the way with her until she agrees to join the team. That makes no sense. What guy refuses sex? Even worse, all the other girls are desperate to sleep with him too. What is his problem? After he refuses to sleep with one of the girls, they spread a rumor that he's gay. Then some stupid shit happens with the girls modeling and blah blah, more sex, everyone wins in the end, you're welcome. Let's be honest, the movie starts off with a naked woman on a gym horse practicing her routines while the opening credits are displayed. Actually perverts, she's not naked. But that yellow skin tight leotard makes it look like it, right? Right? No, it's just me, huh? It's got some nice and silly opening pop music to get you started, and the camera angles are so leery with close-ups of shapely bums and lots of spread legs. It actually takes six and a half minutes until the first bit of nudity, which for a 66 minute film is far too long. But it's not a comfortable scene, as Kei-chan is kinda being forced into sex by her horny director, who comes within two seconds of poking it in. We know this as he takes off his cum-filled condom. That's pretty lame, dude. The sex continues pretty quickly, as we then see Kei-chan being fingered in bed by, I assume, is her boyfriend. She just starfishes her way through the sex scene, and it's now established this movie doesn't seem to be going for the erotic here at all. Feminists are not gonna like this film. There's a pretty candid talk of poor Kei-chan being over the hill at only 23 years of age. What. The. Hell. Like she's some kind of baby making machine and that's all she's good for. Not only that, but there is a lot of unnecessary face slapping. My biggest takeaway from this film is that in 1981, Japanese women were considered nothing more than just sex toys for horny businessmen. And now that it's 2022, I'm not so sure anything's really changed. I really hope you like looking at women's body parts. Who am I kidding? Of course you do. While I would like to believe this movie offers an insight into female sexuality, I think the overall product is a man's wet dream. Honestly, most guys would kill to have a woman react like this around them, especially when driving one of the girls home results in her stripping off in the car. Seriously, I don't know a single guy who would be able to refuse any of these women, 1980s hairstyles or not. The actor in this film has incredible self-control, but maybe not in between takes. One thing's for sure, the Japanese know how to make smutty erotic films. It's easy when they have a country full of good-looking women. 
but the story here isn't anything more than an excuse for lots of crazy sexual situations. What I'm not going to tell you more about is the gay sex scene, which is very typical 1980s in a kind of homophobic way that takes a unexpected twist. Strangely, in the end, this movie isn't what you think it's about. The whole gymnastics team thing is pointless. The movie is just about the coach and K-Chan and their inability to have sex with each other. Because I started rating movies in the last video, I'm going to do it here too, and I'll give this three and a half sets of soft Japanese boobies out of five. Good variety in the girls on display and a steady stream of smut for your hand and tissue box to enjoy. Be the pervert you want to be. If you've seen this, what did you think of it? Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.